Well, hello. Uh, I'm Sonny Vergara. I'm a photographer. I haven't always been a photographer, but uh, that's what I do now. And, uh, and we're in beautiful Spring Lake, Florida, part of Hernando County, and we love it here. Well, uh, I'm a Tampa native, Florida native, born in Tampa. Uh, moved to this Hernando County uh, in 1948, so the family's been here like forever. Uh, I grew up here, went to school here, first grade through the uh, 12th grade. Went to University of Florida, went to USF, went to FSU, and finally graduated out in Southern California. So I've been around for, those, uh, for those, that time and those purposes. But uh, I've been in the Marine Corps, uh, spent a lot of time, a career in water, uh, and, uh, but got into photography almost as I retired uh, back in uh, 2003, but I have been interested in photography for virtually all my life. In high school, I was, of course, in the camera club. Everybody's in the camera club, but, uh, and that kind of opened the door. But uh, through most of my life, I really didn't have the resources or the time to get into a hobby, the hobby of, of photography. So, but I would read about it and I'd followed it and, uh, and had a few educational opportunities to learn about it. Uh, and so uh, after I retired, I had the time, I had the resources and I really got into it. And, and it just incidentally, that was about the time that digital photography took off. Uh, so I had to spend a lot more time learning the digital aspects of photography. And that is the basis of a lot of the photography of mine that you see. It's, it's the, the digital capability of making the picture uh, what I see it as in the scene. It, the, the, what comes out of the camera isn't necessarily always what I see. So by, it's called post-processing. And you get into, when you get into post-processing, it's the opportunity to make that picture what you want it to be. And that's where the art uh, comes into it and you try to make the picture uh, meet certain technical standards. It has to be in focus perhaps, or some parts of it may be out of focus. Some of it may be uh, uh, sharp, uh, I mean super sharp. Some of it may be made soft. Uh, colors can be enhanced. You don't want to enhance it too much. A lot of people do that, and it makes the picture look uh, false and not art at all. Uh, that's a mistake that a lot of amateurs make, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm not an amateur, but uh, uh, I, I've quit making that mistake. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess I've moved on beyond that. Um, so anyway, uh, and the camera itself, uh, you know, if you if you want to be a photographer, you really have to understand the mechanics of a, of a uh, camera. Uh, cameras these days are really small computers. They're in terms of of general function, they're exactly the same as the camera was in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. But how the camera creates uh, the image that you're trying to uh, document or, or to catch um, is, is now electronically done. And so photographers who uh, in the past, before digital photography, had to know the camera, uh, uh, the, the, the three components, you know, aperture, uh, speed, and then the sensitivity of the film. Those are the three things that you had to know how to do to get the image correctly. So it's still the same way, but it's, those things have changed a little bit because digitally, it, electronically, it's controlled. And so you have to know how to tell the camera what you, how you want to manipulate those controls. So anyway, once you've done that, you, after you've really learned uh, what the camera is supposed to do, and then how your particular camera is going to do it and how you're going to make it do it, then you have to get the image, which is now a digital image, out of the camera and, uh, and put that through a post-process. Uh, and typically, your more learned, I guess, photographers use Photoshop. Uh, uh, and Photoshop is, is like computers today. If you have a laptop or a phone, you probably know how to use about 10 or 20% of it. Photoshop is a lot like that. I don't know anybody that knows everything about Photoshop, and I don't think I know more than about 20%, 10 or 20%. But what I do know is what I need to make my photographs the way I want them. Uh, and, I, I, and there's another aspect of photography that, that perhaps gets controversial because a lot of artists, painters, uh, and I, I don't hold this against them at all, uh, don't consider photography a true art. Uh, because in the, in the beginning, the, the camera and filming 
It was meant to document, it was meant to record the reality that this person saw and wanted to maintain that image for, so that it could be preserved for history or for journalism, for newspapers, that sort of thing. So, but, but, but today's photograph, photographers have gone beyond that or can go beyond that if they wish to, and I wish to. So when I make a photograph, it's not to document what, what is there, the physical thing that I'm looking at. I want to catch and make it say something to whoever else is going to see that image after me, after I've, I've made it what I want it to be. And if it doesn't say anything to anybody else, it's not worth making. So it has to say something. But that's art. If art makes you move, makes you think, makes you emote, makes you sing, makes you cry, uh, then that's what art does. So that's the fun thing about photography right now. So I've reached a level uh, of capability that uh, I think I'm satisfied with. I'm not really, I shouldn't say that. I'm not satisfied. I think, I think what I go after, and a lot of photographers will tell you this, is the first thing you wanna do is catch the eye. Whether it's the eye of a grasshopper or a squirrel or a bird, you, you, you wanna see the eye. Uh, and perfectly clear if you can do that. Then the rest of the bird, uh, people wanna see uh, what is it that is so beautiful about a bird? If you take a picture of a bird sitting on a wire and it, that's all they're doing, sometimes that can be nice. That's a, that's a good thing. A lot of people do that. And then that, that picture of that bird goes into a bird book so to identify that bird. And that's great. Uh, but if you really want to get a picture of a bird, try to catch one that's <clears throat> in the mating season uh, and some birds color changes when they're in, in, the, in the mating mood uh, and they have a display. Well, a bird in display, it, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Uh, any bird, practically, from a turkey to a, uh, you know, a, a heron or an egret. And so when you're, when you're photographing birds out in nature, that's what you do, want to do. So you go at certain times of the year when you think that uh, they're going to be uh, in the mood, so to speak, uh, and, and where there's a lot of them. So the trick is to find out where the rookeries are, go there at a certain time, and if uh, there are certain places in the state of Florida where the, the birds create rookeries, uh, per, and I'll just tell you, it's, it's, it's in alligator farms because the alligators will keep away the, the ground uh, located, ground oriented predators that would otherwise climb the tree and get with the, the bird eggs and all that. So that's not going to happen with gators all, all around the bottom of, of the rookery. But they have to be careful about not falling in or their babies not falling in too. So that's always a risk. But so anyway, rookeries over in alligator farms is a great place because the birds have become used to having humans on the walkways. Uh, so you can get sometimes really, really close. So that's one way that you can get some really nice pictures. But the interest, I think the public interest in, in nature is where the picture displays something that they didn't know about that bird. It's uh, the, the, uh, the way its feathers uh, are colored, perhaps, or the way they lay on, on the body of the bird uh, in certain circumstances and, and, and how, they're, how they can react, perhaps, their, their, their chicks and they're feeding their chicks. Uh, you catch them, baby chick, waiting for the food and the mother about to about to provide that food it's a pretty exciting thing and it's a unique thing it'll never happen again it's exactly like in that same situation so when you capture that you've caught a piece of of reality that'll never happen again in exactly the same way in fact that's the way you need to look at all pictures and all art uh, all photographs i should say uh, when you're taking picture of anything because the light never stays the same Sunrises are never the same, sunsets are never the same, every one of them is different and, they, and they, are, they change by the second. So you have to be there at the right time um, and take more than one picture. Uh, you know, people ask me, well, how many, how many photographs do you take at a, on, a, on a day? I'll tell you with digital photography, because you, you, you're not messing with film, you're not having to load your camera, you can take thousands of pictures in, uh, on, your, on your phone, so how many pictures do I take in a day? It's not unusual for myself and a friend of mine that we go out on shoots to spend uh, 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 maybe three or four hours concentrated on that trip, taking pictures at one time, and we'll make six or 700 images. Sometimes more than that, I've made as high as almost a 1,000. Uh, cameras today are uh, 
you can, you can tell them to take a series of photographs, let's say 10 photographs, and it can do it within one second. So it's like a, it's like a machine gun kind of a thing. Uh, and that's useful because birds are, or any animal is always moving. And you never know when, when that, uh, that animal is going to be in the, in the perfect stance that makes that shot so, so easy to look at, so desirable to look at, and that says something for you. So if you take a series of shots, you can pick the one out that's the best. So that's why you have, sometimes you can shoot up a thousand shots, but you're only there for three hours. I mean, you're, you're firing away, trying to catch that magic shot. So when you get home and you're doing post-processing, you know, well, how many out of a thousand shots, my gosh, are you gonna try to print all those? No, you throw most of them away or store them away. Um, you may find out of those shots, I would say maybe five or 10 shots that are, that are worth putting on Facebook or, or printing and, and taking it to your next show, you know, whatever. Five shots, maybe. And if you're lucky, you get one fantastic shot out of all that's worth the trip. Uh, my friend and I always talk about that, you know, this, we, 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 we're leaving, we've been there for three hours, it's so exciting, you see all these things, and you just hope that you can, you've got one shot, and if it's a good, if it's a good shoot, you come away and you feel good about it, you say that it was worth the trip, and that's what it's all about. An interesting happens uh, when you start in the, um, in the field of photography, and I'm sure this happens with, with artists who create things, and that is that when you begin, you take pictures, uh, let's say 10 years ago, and you think that those pictures are really good. You're starting out and you think they're really good, so you maybe have a handful of those. Well, fast forward to five years from then, and the, the fact is you look back and you say, ah, what was I thinking? And I've got in here, I've got stacks of prints over there that are mounted, they're, they're matted, and uh, I've tried to sell them, and uh, I'm embarrassed, you know, that, uh, that I still have them. I gotta get rid of them somehow, but I'm probably gonna put them through a shredder of some sort. Um, but, so, if, you know, if, if I had the favorite shot, uh, I don't know that I could say what was my favorite shot. And the reason is because even today, uh, when I feel like I've got a really good shot and I've had all this years of experience to, to get to where I think that that's good, in my opinion, I can go back to photographs that I took 10 years ago, literally 10 years ago, that I rejected. And now, since I'm smarter, <laughs> right, theoretically, and I've learned, I've learned more about how to process them, I go back and look at that and I say, wow, I'll take that shot, you know, um, and, and, and put it through again. And, it, and it, 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 they, then they really are nice. And there is one picture like that that I'm, that I'm thinking about. It was taken in Crystal River and it was of uh, two fledgling uh, great blue herons. Uh, they were in a nest, but you can't tell from the photograph that they were near a nest, they were in it. Uh, but they are excited for some reason, these two and I just happened to be, we, I was with Gary Cool, and we were in a boat uh, and just kind of coasting around behind this island. And I got the shot up underneath them, uh, which uh, perspective and angle is uh, other things that you have to, you want to really think about when you take a picture. So, but anyway, that one picture is something that I've gone back and looked at and reprocessed the original file. I've reprocessed processed it probably five or six times, and every time I do that, it changes, it morphs, it's better, in my opinion, you know. Well, there are places in Florida, and they're all over the place. If, if there's a creek near you, or if there's a river near you, uh, that's the place where you're gonna find it. But it's not just being there, you have to be there at the right time. And birds and animals are not active during the day, very, much, very few of them are. So the best time to do it is early in the morning, daybreak. Uh, daybreak, in any case, or sunset in any case, is always the best time of day. Animals are active uh, in landscape shots. The light angle is much more definitive. Um, instead of a bright light coming down like this, you have this wonderful uh, colored light coming up from the horizon or going down in the horizon. And that, that impacts everything that you see. Uh, so those, anyway, the time of day is important uh, and where the animals are uh, in terms of places that we've been and uh, some great, great uh, storm shots with, with cypress trees 
uh, in the forefront uh, is uh, places like Blue Cypress Lake down in Indian River County. Um, we are planning a trip up in the hand, Panhandle uh, Lakes, a place up there called Dead Lakes. Uh, San Blas is a uh, coastal dune uh, kind of a thing, uh, but it's, it's beautiful, beautiful white sands. It has flowers in the sand dunes, and the sand dunes are very, uh, you know, have a lot of definition to them. So you, you just think about those things and hope that when you get there, you're going to have the light, uh, you're going to have the weather. If it's a bright, bright sunny day, that's not always good. You, you want something that's a little bit uh, overcast uh, because the light isn't so, the contrast in the photograph itself isn't so great. Uh, if you have dark shadows and bright something else, it's hard to bring those two together so that the, the detail in the photograph is, is, is observable. Uh, so you want a kind of an overcast day, but not for sunrises and sunsets, of course. You want to see that sun come up, but it's great to have clouds for the sun to be shown through. Uh, shots of something else that's, that's in the picture, not just the sunrise, but you want rocks. Uh, you want a, a, um, a lighthouse, for example, a great shot. Everybody loves to take pictures of lighthouses, but if you add a sunrise or a sunset to it uh, with, with palm trees in the distance and some water, uh, then now you're painting a picture, you know, and if you get the light just right and the colors just right and you're able to capture that and then reproduce it in a photograph, that's what you're after. You look for in every photograph, uh, what is it that's making that photograph special? If it's an animal that's doing something, then you want that animal to be in perfect, perfect, tack sharp focus. With other stuff in the background that may be distracting, not so sharp in focus. Um, if you're taking pictures of a landscape, uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, you, you have to look at the total picture and make sure that the balance is right. You know, there, uh, there's this, this concept of uh, the thirds, thirds, third, third. Uh, you have the sunrise or sunset on a horizon. You don't want the horizon more than a third of the way up in the picture. So that's the, the thirds concept. Some people don't, don't pay attention to that, and I don't have the time, but sometimes you realize that really is the difference in what makes the picture what it is. I don't know why that is. It's just something that artists have used forever. So that's, it's, you know, it has, that has something to do with the, what's gonna be in the frame. All the components of that picture have to, be, have to be balanced somehow, or it can be unbalanced if it emphasizes the thing that you want uh, the, the person that's, uh, that's looking at the picture to see. So, and that's, that's, that it goes back to the individual and what that person wants that picture to say. Color, black and white and color. Uh, I never take a picture in black and white, none. None of, I, none of these pictures you see in black and white are taken in black and white. And the reason is because Photoshop allows you to, um, to change it to black and white, but it does, it's not like here it is in color and here it is in black and white. What it does is it, it says, okay, I'm going to let you look at this photograph in monochrome, but I'm not going to take away all the color aspects. I can tweak you out, tweak up the green and it'll change that black and white photograph. Or I can tweak down the green and it'll lighten th that portion of that photograph that was green. It's now dark or something, you know, gray or something, but it goes light or, or dark. Well, if you've got seven colors, seven primary colors, or eight or nine or 10, or however it is that Adobe lets you manipulate in there, you can really change that black and white monochrome photograph to make it something more than what it was. You can overdo it. Another aspect is infrared photography, which is a really, really uh, interesting way to take, a picture, uh, to take pictures of uh, landscapes because it takes green leaves and makes them almost white. Uh, it takes other aspects of the photograph and changes their, their relationship to what you're used to seeing. So it gives it kind of an eerie uh, look, which, which sometimes is really nice to, to have and display. Those are the things that you, you put into the photograph that's valuable to you and that you think that people are going to see as you do. And if they do, and, they, and it gives them the same feeling it gives you, boy, that's, that makes you feel good. That's what it's all about. What are, the, what are the most important things about becoming a, a photographer and what should I do uh, to become a reasonably good photographer? And uh, I think there's several things. 
One is uh, you really have to understand the function of your camera. So don't just think that you can always keep it on automatic or the P program uh, mode and take all the pictures you want. The more you can change those things, manipulate the camera and tell it what you want, uh, the further along you're going to go. Then you have to, uh, be, to uh, be able to do what you want to do with that, that, that image, that file, uh, once it's out of the camera and post-process it. So that means you've got to learn uh, uh, digital programs. I know that's difficult and a lot of people are get discouraged at that point, but if you want to go further with it, then that's, that's what you have to do. You have to learn your camera, you have to learn what you, the post-processing part of it. And then the third thing is, is to get out and take pictures. Get out there, get out there every day, take a picture every day, and, when, and don't stop taking pictures. Just, just keep a camera with you, take them every opportunity, even time. Sometimes it looks silly with a person walking around with a camera. What are they doing? What do they think they're gonna take a picture of? Well, there are things out there. And if you, you just don't pay attention to that, you, you keep the camera with you, take pictures, take pictures, take pictures, and you will see, you will begin to look at light differently. You'll begin to look at composition uh, differently because you want in that picture certain things, certain things out of it. And that's what composition is all about and how it's arranged in that image. So it's light, uh, it's uh, contrast, it's color. Uh, all those things, you'll be, you'll be looking at the world differently. Once you get to that point as a photographer, everything I see, I'm looking at it from the point of view of through a camera lens. And I talked to my buddy that we go in, uh, on trips with, uh, and he says it's the same thing. And he was an engineer. He was never concerned with photography until he retired. And we've been doing this now for almost 10 years, uh, incessantly and, and constantly and, and passionately. And, um, and it's true you begin to see things differently. And I'm sure that that's the case with every artist.